I know it's been a long time since I've been in Seattle, but I promise that's not the reason my space looks like this. Today is a momentous day here in Seattle because this is the last day for Epic Antiques. It's such a great store, but the merger with Lander Street Marketplace is complete. So we are all moving over there because they are expanding and now we're all going to be under one roof. Which means it's moving day and there's not a whole lot left. I just packed the last of the boxes. Right? Yeah. Wow, it is amazing that it's just so big. Oh yeah, I'm only doing big ones at this point. Uh, it, yeah, exactly. Otherwise it's too much work because by the time you pay for all the expenses, especially now. And everybody else is getting it out the door. We have a few things here and I'm proud to say none of them are mine. These are the things that have accumulated over five years here that belong to dealers that lost their tag or lost their ID. So most of them have been accounted for. That's a good thing. There's still some really fun stuff left to be packed here. The ship clock is really fun from the 50s. Look at this beautiful piece here. We're actually getting to highlight a few things because most of it has already gone to the other store. There's a huge area that is now the Tom Gores collection there with all of the fabulous modernism that had been in this part of this store. And then the dealers, like me, have all been accommodated in spaces all the way to the very back of Lander Street Marketplace. So now that mall is full. We'll get over there and see that a little bit later here. I have a new space there and I just got it. I'd never seen it before. It has an interesting configuration and I'm very happy with it. Although this place will definitely be missed because it's been a fantastic venue. Everybody made money here over the last five years. It actually was a really, really amazing feat to turn what was not a retail location in an industrial district into a retail design center. However, Epic, unfortunately, in some ways is a victim of its own success. This building, because of Epic, sold to a new owner and the new owner, not understanding the economics of the antique business, wanted to raise the rent 30%. Fortunately, Lander Street Marketplace had a large back room and that is now full of what used to be here. Their round shelves, very similar to mine, are now only $37.50. So I'm going to have to lower the price on mine. Lots to do though. It's definitely a big deal to move a big old store like this. Vintage fashion is sold well here and it sells even better at the other place. It's going to be interesting to see the difference between the two markets. You think that because the stores are only five minutes apart that they're going to have exactly the same customer, but it just doesn't work that way. The Lander Street Marketplace is in much more of a traditional retail area. And because of that, we should see customers for things that we didn't have here where it was more designers, decorators, and serious collectors. But it is strange and eerie. It's always sad to see an antique mall go. And I definitely have really enjoyed this one. Oh, there's a couple of free things here. A very basic industrial building. I'm not really sure why the new owner thinks he's going to be able to get 30% more rent. What a difference though. And some real bargains at the last day. $3 for this round pedestal table. 40% off this dealer's last rack of clothing. Our friend here, the art dealer, is 60% off today. And the rule is if it's still out, it's still for sale. So there are people here shopping. This is officially the last day of business. I actually sold an item of mine yesterday to somebody who was shopping in the half off sale and I bought something myself. So that's one thing. Closing sales at malls are good opportunities to find interesting merchandise that maybe just didn't get seen or was in the wrong place or at the wrong price that suddenly is discounted heavily. I liked a lot of my merchandise and had some fresh stock in, so I only went 30% off, but a lot of people did half. I see some things here I would honestly consider buying at half price. We've been having a moving sale here for, gosh, about a month to six weeks. Tom and I got matching clocks at an estate sale years ago. Mine was orange. I finally sold it. He still has his. Look at this amazing architectural piece and the one over here. These would make great, great lamps at the entry to a fancy home or a room. Neat weather vane there. We got a bunch of clocks out of an estate sale in Oregon years ago too. These are the slave clocks and that means that they won't run without the master clock being plugged in 
and that's why this whole set is still here because you've got to buy all of them together to make it work this is a really great piece here that I'm tempted to buy at $100 because it's 20% off. It's Consolidated Catalonian. It's a really fun color. This is in the style of Gaudi. If you think of Barcelona, where so many of the Gaudi architectural designs were made, this comes from shortly after that, and it definitely has that influence with the curvilinear nature of it, the fact that nothing is really a right angle. It's a very interesting design, in my opinion. I've always been a fan and it dates back to the 1920s. Neat totem there. Parts of some really cool tables. I think the glass is already gone. They've been moving stuff out of here. The big moving trucks have been coming, oh, for a few days. And they've got a couple days more. I love the lucite and acrylic, of course. They're saving that to last because that's got to be wrapped so it won't scratch when you move it. These poor folks have to move everything, of course, including the supplies of the store. Brass wall stuff is still very popular right now. That's a little more difficult to transport. You don't want to scratch things, so that usually ends up stacked between blankets. I sold my Arthur Umanoff bar stools in Florida. He really did a lot of interesting barware, including this sling mount wine bottle set. Uh, this stand dates from the 1960s or 70s, and it's priced at 1300 with the discount. It really has been a Herculean effort moving everything over to the other store, though. This was all showcases before, so all of that had to be moved early on in the process. And actually, two of them ended up in my new booth, which is proving to be very helpful to me. Well, I guess this is my last moment here, so let's go see the new space and check out what we're doing over at Lander Street Marketplace. Five minutes later. Lander Street Vintage used to be the post office, so it's a huge building, and thanks to some reorganization, some shuffling, and some expansion, everybody at Epic who wanted to come over to sell here is going, including me. I got the very last space, and I'm actually really happy with it. It's in the very back of the mall, and I have found that that is a great place to be. The tower behind Lander Street Vintage is the Starbucks International Headquarters. Yes, yeah, Starbucks grew out of a single little place at the Pike Place Market to be the coffee behemoth that it is now. They took over that building, which is actually the original 1930 Sears warehouse. We're at Third Avenue South and right down the road from the stadiums and downtown. With the expansion, Lander Street Vintage is arguably the biggest antique and vintage marketplace in the Northwest as far as antique malls go, and it has just amazing stuff. And I'm very proud to be part of it now. We're gonna walk all the way to the back where my space is. I am down the aisle past all of the showcases. Back in the catacombs and around the corner, and I have only first seen this space yesterday and put what I could in it, and somehow it just really fell together, and I'm really excited about the way that it's starting to display. It's an interesting combination of things. I think the colors are good, but boy, I've got some stuff to do today. I am literally at the end of the mall because past here, there are supplies and carts and useful things, and I'm going to go get one of the carts right now. They do sell stuff here, so I think this is gonna be a great location. They're closer to a retail area here because of Starbucks and Home Depot and a bunch of other retail operations. So you're gonna see a certain amount of dishevelment because a whole lot of us just got over here. But there's a lot of displays that already were in place because of course Lander Street Marketplace has been running for a few years now and originally was Pacific Gallery's antique mall. Here we go into the Tom Gorse collection. It's actually shaping up pretty well, considering we all just have been dealing with this for a very short period of time. I like the Rotoflex double table lamp. That is really cool. The restrooms are way back here in a very obscure location, which is great because you come from those in a different direction and you get right to my space. But first I want to take a look at this gurgle bottle. This is an Empoli version, but these were done by Pilgrim Glass and Blanco as well. $255. It is the correct stopper. That would not be a ground stopper in an Empoli piece because they weren't that concerned about fit, not like the American companies. We go around the corner and my space needs a lot more light and we all know it. it they just created this space. This whole back area, in fact, was just newly created. So they're going to be wiring th some things in. We're going to be hanging my Budweiser horse lamp, which is worth somewhere in the $1,000 range. 
they sell on eBay for that pretty consistently, in fact. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is get things cleared out so there's more of an entry to the booth and so that I can stack some furniture behind some furniture because I've got a lot of stuff to put out in boxes. Okay, I had to make some choices. I've decided that I'm going to put lightweight things that can rest on this, on this relatively stable Salterini table, on this very stable brass table. And there's a cast iron table behind it. I'm trying to get as much furniture in here as possible because I have lots of smalls. I really need to dust all of this before I put anything on it. We just would like you to subscribe so that we can be in touch with you and let you know what the next fun thing we're doing in the antique and vintage realm is. Two days later. Well, now we are really getting somewhere. We've got all the metal work in up on the top. And again, it's pretty dark in here, but lighting is the next thing that's coming. The big telescope made it here and fit in the corner really well. And we were able to do a lot of masks and fun things behind them and give it some color and some pizzazz. I've brought a candlestick phone and a 1950s phone in. The little Canadian guy here. He's a Mountie Nodder. Isn't that cute? Bottle cap guy. This is a wireless cloisonne vase. I like the color. Somehow I ended up with a fall theme here, but I guess that is our next season. The colors really seem to work together. I've got some fun and poly. I've got miniature flamework pieces. A Swarovski crystal piece. The Pilgrim Glass threaded vase is there. The Parrot is Italian. This is a studio vase here. Very pretty with the peacock pole. I just think it's an interesting and fun display and it's got just a, a different mix of things. I'm really enjoying putting texture together and it's a little bit color theme, but it's really more about putting things together that give an interesting flavor when shown together because a lot of the people who shop here are decorators. There are a number of decanters on the shelf here. One of them I can't really show in polite company but we'll just say it's Delft and from Amsterdam and it depicts something that is seen in certain windows of certain places with red lights on them in Amsterdam. So we'll leave it at that. Seattle World's Fair glass. Oh, it looks like I sold something already. My first sale. I wonder what it was. I just started throwing things out on the shelves yesterday, so I don't really remember what I put where. I've got several pieces of Sasha Bra stuff. I was very happy with the way the colors came together. I think with the gray tones coming back into decorating, it's nice to show an earth tone section and then the other case. I really enjoyed this. It needs light, but I really enjoyed putting this great little Italian Bombay chest that I've been taking to shows and it's starting to get a little worn from that. So I just want it to be somewhere where it can be loved and a few people have already remarked on it. Sometimes it's just about putting it in a context. I've got the modernist head and the 1910 bust. A little bit of Expo 74 stuff. And then over here we get into more of a modernist flair. I decided it was time to bring this mirrored piece from Florida to Seattle. I still have a lot of space and so I am going to put out a lot of paper ephemera that I have been carrying around and not really had room for because I know I have some additional Seattle related things besides the Boeing 720 flight manual which should get the attention here it wasn't getting elsewhere. There's a bunch of Boeing paper here too and I've already sold half of that so that tells me this is the place to put that. Spanish architectural drawings above Afghans, above Seattle World's Fair stuff. So we're going to go through the boxes and see what else we can sprinkle through here. Very happy with this cart. I just think the colors are really fun. It looks like something right out of about 1970 if you were into the bright happy colors of the late 60s and early 70s. And I just think everything on it is fun and I'm especially happy with the way that that silly lion face rug looks under there. <laughs> this front area, I really went with more gold, silver, and not really super colorful because I want the color to pull people into the back. And I thought there were some interesting objects I had that really needed to be highlighted. Plus the shelf that they're on is not super sturdy, so I wanted to do things that were low center of gravity. This is a very here thing, this heavily carved Asian piece. I love this enamel piece with the caterpillars. Kurok pieces, the ship's wheel. You notice I brought in the ship's wheel from Florida along with the paddle that I got in Illinois and a propeller that I got at a flea market. You can't go wrong with red 50s, 60s era plastic and advertising. So I brought the picnic set with the Bakelite, a whole shelf of Colcrouge by Holt Howard. A lot of that's from my mother's collection. 
some lenticular eyed cats and then I wanted to do different things that people would have at home because a lot of people again are decorating or they're buying things that they think are fun and interesting Japanese Olympic Committee flag but that's why I put in things like the gumball machine and the early Funko wobblers that are about 20 some years old now and my radios, good piece of Seguso glass, various trays. I have the sailboat tray down here. I think I may move it now that I have sailboats in another place. Models. So I'm really trying to hit a lot of different customers here. Yes, much better in that place. And it draws attention to the naughty Dutch thing that I can't show you. Okay, well, I'm getting the pricing done. There's about a half an hour left. I've gotten a lot more furniture in than I expected, which is great. Sometimes you just stack and stack and stack and I put a lot of paper ephemera out here. I am going to be buying some other larger objects and this will probably end up being consolidated, but boy, people are stopping and looking at it because it's something there isn't a lot of in this mall. So note to self, keep bringing this kind of thing. The first thing I sold, paper ephemera. And right now I'm leaving the last piece I'm putting in for today. I am gonna to have to find some way to rig a black light up because this thing is wonderful. A friend and viewer of mine turned me on to this piece. It was in Spokane. I paid $150, but it is Murano and it is uranium glass. If you imagine this being a strong black light without my camera light off setting it, this thing really glows and I'm really excited about it. They've had pretty good traffic today, so that's exciting. It's nice to see people going into the booth and it's nice to be here when you're first setting up a booth and watch the traffic flow. I have a pretty narrow opening to the booth but once people are in there's plenty of room to walk around so I'm seeing multiple people going in at one time which is my big concern. We'll give you a little view of some other parts of the mall as we walk through. I've got to go up to the counter and try to find some more price tags because I have used up everything I brought. But this is a really fun mall. Oh this is a studio piece from Seattle here. R&O Studios not a company that I'm familiar with so I'll have to look for their stuff now. This is a fun booth forming here neat biscuit container here this old store display wow look at this with all of the levels that are at angles fun display there's some fun in the showcase with the silver saxophone and a bunch of really cool barware definitely things i would enjoy owning and selling or maybe even buying to collect this seems like a really good price this is bohemian or czech they actually do know the name of the designer these were being done in the 1990s 45 dollars seems like a good price for a big hunk of cranberry glass Moroccan style brass hanging lamp and look at the cool seahorse mosaic above it I love seahorses this guy came over from epic and I'm surprised he's still here because he is fantastic and really well done look at the detail in the face the metallic striping this is Louis Hotot cold painted on metal it's a very good sculptor so the detail is really good even by standards of the day and the feet are like real human feet which always tells you you've got a good sculptor his name is hidden under there but it is just a beautiful piece wow they're all ceramic they're all real they're not the reproduction fakes that's great these people just have to fill those top shelves hmm i see the phone dealer is still going strong here one that I think I should show because you will see these in houses and people get confused is this one. This is Kellogg's. No relationship to Kellogg's cereal, but that red bar, Kellogg's red bar phones, that's what collectors call them. There's another one. This one's the wall version priced at $125 and the desk version priced at $125. This one's neat too. It's the automatic electric jukebox style as they like to call them because of the fact that the receiver hangs down on the bottom instead of on the side. Stromberg Carlson fat phone in the 1930s and 40s priced at 175. This was the classic home phone for a long time in the 1940s and 50s and it's known as the Western Electric 302. I appraised this trunk and it ended up coming into the store and they do have a price tag similar to what I appraised it for. $15,000. It's got the correct information on it to be true Louis Vuitton from the 1920s. One of the more spectacular pieces that I've appraised in the Seattle area. What a great jury teardrops piece here laying flat. A lot of stuff is just sort of laying here because this is part of the assemblage of things coming over from Epic. And you can tell this is a busy place. They've got a couple registers going. I'm excited to be here. I think this is going to be a good move for us. And that's saying a lot because Epic was a really good store and I did well there. I always consistently made a thousand to 
3,000 a month in sales. And so to move over here, well, it would seem like a big sacrifice, except that this place is poised to do the same level of sales or greater. Weight is definitely a way to identify things. The dealer has this marked at, as 50s. She's a great dealer and she does really well. She just moved over from Epic to, I would say honestly, this is probably 70s, not just because that's when the Alcraze was so big, but because it's really lightweight for its size. I mean, this is 15 inches tall and yet it only weighs about four pounds maybe, or maybe less. And ceramics did have to get lighter in this period of time because suddenly there was competition from overseas and the cost of shipping went way up. This guy's really cool because he's a different take on the same variation. I usually find just this part. These were done in Montana in the early 1970s. I've only had one that had a label on it. They have 18 on it. I sold mine that were just the owl without all this stuff for 18 a piece. Just sort of had to toss the snowshoes in front, but they're 195 and that's a pretty reasonable price they sell at. So maybe they'll just go away and then we can get to her shelves, but she's still working on those. So she blocked them. This is a neat piece, the Italian ceramic chandelier with the roses. I've had these in metal, but this one is all ceramic, which I think is pretty cool. This is another 1970s issue. This is priced at $3.95. String art is another one of those home craft things that I think are going to be the primitives of the future. Somebody really went to a lot of work. They got their frame, they got their piece of velvet, they got their copper wire and their brass wire, and I think you could buy forms to follow with these, but you could also just make them up yourself if you were creative, and a lot of people were back then. What a fun childhood case with all these felt pictures from the 1930s, 40s, and 50s. I am really a fan of this piece of wall art. I just think that is super cool. I'm not the only dealer here who likes a pop of color. And these folks are doing it with some really cool art. So my neighbor here has a ton of stuff and it's not particularly sorted, but it is selling. Apparently this guy does thousands of dollars a month with this stuff back here and it is sort of just kind of a hodgepodge, but there's really interesting collectible things in the middle of the hodgepodge. So it's not just about presenting a designer space. On the other hand, if I had this Raymond Lowy furniture, I would do nothing but designer. I just love this stuff. Such a fun and advanced design for the 1970s. Just one of my favorite industrial designers ever. These are neat too. These are Percival Lawfer. And these are fiberglass and rosewood. And they're 3,500 the pair, but rosewood is such a hard material to get. You can see it under the base there. Still getting things in. It's not just me. Everybody's moving stuff over from the other store. And then adding new collections like the airplanes here. And just trying to figure out how to get it all in and make it look great. Because this is such a good looking mall. We all want to do our very best to keep it going that way. Wow, if you like modernist class, there's a little bit in here right now. Actually, it's coming together pretty well. They've been doing a lot of work to get it in and get it cohesive. This is a pilgrim glass decanter. They did these satin finishes in the early 1970s where it goes, it's an amberina to a yellow green, but then they did the satin effect on it, which really changes it. And I actually think it's quite likable and it glows in a sense without having to have a black light. It's one of their more unusual lines and that's why it's priced at 165. Pilgrim doesn't sell for as much as Blanco does, but there's not necessarily a good reason for that. They had very good designers from Italy and they made really nice stuff. And the designs are good, the colors are interesting, and it's definitely of the era. And they're just starting to get this really great jewelry display in here. And look at some of the really wonderful turquoise that you see in there. This one is signed, yay, it's 950. And there we go. That is really amazing. Look how thick and big that is. Lots of silver, coral, and turquoise, and inlays, and pave. I mean, there's just a ton of work went into that. Fantastic printer's drawers. It's nice to see some of these with the drawers still in them because so many of these printer's cabinets were taken apart. The drawers were all sold and they threw the husk away because no one's ever going to want that old furniture except now everybody who collects, whether they collect print block plates or seashells or jewelry, thinks that these little divided cabinets, marbles, I mean all sorts of teeny tiny things that people collect fit in these now and now they wish they'd left them alone and there are not too many of them left. They are asking 2,600 for this pair. 
Here is an old typewriter. It is a QWERTY board. So it's after that was established as the keyboard we were going to use, but it's still really old. It's a fold down, so it's a portable. And this is a Hammond made in USA Model 26, as you see there. And the thing is, is it probably still works, but I'm not gonna give it a try. This one is priced at 225, which I think for as unusual as it is, it's a pretty good deal. Whereas this one, is priced at 150 the classic royal that was in probably every office in the 1940s. This has got to be one of the craziest TV lamps I've ever seen, made in Italy in the 1960s. Look at the fish. It is just so weird that it's actually both ugly and really likable at the same time. They have some really neat stuff in this case, actually. Let me back out a little bit so you can see up here, too. This fish is really neat. It's submerso glass from Italy. This is a Schneider vase. Schneider is a wonderful glass company from France that a lot of Americans don't know about, but people who collect Schneiders still do. This one is from 1927, priced at 16.50. This one is Dom Nancy from France, Deco 1930s, priced at 9.50. And then this is a Bakelite purse, but to the left is a Bakelite coffee grinder. I've never seen such a thing. Certainly have seen the Dittmar Urbach Czech Toucan picture before though, and that is a great piece. Boy, if I had the right size frame, I would buy this because it's another paint by number. It's an old one. It's a flamingo. It needs to be mounted because it's a little warped, but they did a good job on it. And what is more Florida than a paint by number flamingo? Framed right, that could probably sell for $65 or $75 down there. I brought these in earlier today and they didn't really find a place to go, but they look fine where they are all those metal pieces and the horns. <laughs> well, I'm really happy that the booth looks like lots of fun and people are seeming to discover it. I can't wait to see what it looks like when they get the lighting in and everything is really lit well. I'm very excited. I like being in the back because by the time the people get here, they have seen everything else in the store. So they're not going to hesitate. They're going to make their decision and take the thing up to the counter because they don't want to walk all the way back here again. And I have done very well being in the back of stores. So I think it's going to be a wonderful space. I'm very excited about the rebirth of my space in the sister mall to the one I was in. If you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also click thumbs up to like this video and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.